How old are you? 66. I'm 24. 29. 30. 56. 57. I'm 23. I'm 25. 54. 22. 23. 71. When did you guys get your first phone? 12. I was uh, end of sixth grade. I got... Okay. Everyone had one. <laughs> I got like an iPod Touch when I was like 11. My first phone was like a little, like one of the slide ones. I was like probably 10, just for my oh, just wow. for safety. My mom wanted to keep in touch with me. I think I was in, I was in seventh grade. I was in seventh grade. Yeah, I got like a, I want to say sixth grade. Yeah. Oh my goodness, probably, um, I want to say fifth grade, but it was a flip phone. Yeah. yeah. I was in sixth grade, so I was 12 years old, and it was because both my parents worked, um, so they just needed to be able to reach me or have, you know, give me a way to reach them in case of emergencies. Um, but yeah, none, nobody else I knew had a phone when I was 12. I had no reason to have, to have a phone. I had absolutely no reason to have one at that age. I was in Catholic school. There was no reason for me to have one. It was high school, so I was like 13 or 14, I think. Yeah. Uh, like a cell phone type? Yes. Uh, gosh, when did I get it? Uh, 2005, so 18 years ago. So I would have been 40-something, 40, 40, in my mid, late 40s or middle 40s. Probably 40. Probably 40. I don't know. Maybe, maybe 35. Know. Maybe 35. Yeah, it was a while ago. I would have been in my 20s, so that would have been 70s. First, well, landline, my parents always had a landline in their house. When I had my own personal landline, I was probably 18, maybe. What was the first phone you ever had? A flip phone. You mean a cell phone? Yeah, a cell phone. yeah it was definitely a flip phone. Uh, it was a Go phone. Um, just, you know, you put minutes on it, like you buy the cards and you put uh -huh. it. And the reason I got that, the only reason I got it is I was driving cross country. I was moving to Seattle at the time and I just wanted a phone for when I was out in the sticks somewhere where there was no phone. So I got that for the trip and then I got my first smartphone when I moved out there, when I got out there. I didn't have an iPhone. It was, it was touch screen, but, and it was, I guess like a new wave for the time, but it slid. Yes. I same. loved it. Mine slid. I think it was like a, bl a black, not a Blackberry. Sam's something. Yeah, mine was a But Samsung. it wasn't an iPhone. Yeah. Ooh, I got, it was, a, it was a slidey keyboard one, you know? And I got it so I could text my parents to pick me up from softball practice. <laughs> yeah, I had a Motorola, Motorola Razor flip phone for emergency use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Razor flip phone. It was sick. A box phone in my vehicle. It was a landline phone before smartphones were invented or cell phones. How do you think that communication has changed over your guys' lifetime? Oh, I think that, I think that in-person communication has changed a lot because we have so much opportunity to like keep each other updated so often over like the phone and over text that like I think it changes the significance and like the value in like getting together with your friends to like catch up on everything. Cause like I text my friend every 25 minutes about what I've done. Um, and so I think that has changed a lot. And also like, but it's also the benefit of it is like I get to talk to my parents so often because like they all have phones. <laughs> yeah, I mean, whether it be good or bad, like. I feel like at this point, like I rely on my phone and my technology just to be in touch between, you know, family members, friends, or just making any general plans at all. Just having that at the at the tip of my fingers is just it makes it really easy and convenient, but also it can be a little bit much. <laughs> um, definitely used to call my friends on the landline. Like, mm. definitely had more voice communication. Now it's mostly texting. I'd say a phone call here and there. Mm -hmm. I would say that too. I also think, I, this doesn't really answer the question, but I think because I had like a Samsung and everything sort of moved to 
if you have an Apple product and you're you kind of are stuck in that sort of wave of just they've they've sort of merged everything. So if you have a computer, you kind of have to get the iPhone. So I think in terms of that, like you know, like there, you FaceTime more. It's it's hard to communicate with people that don't have iPhones. Not yeah, hard, but I just feel true. like I exclusively it depends on ride with the iPhone folk. Yeah, which has affected communication about it. Yeah. But. Um. Learning how to communicate and have like interpersonal relationships and growing and bonding with people has really changed from what I was taught as a child to how I learned how to interact with people. Now, um, through things that I've learned, um, lessons that I've learned, um, but COVID really took a good chunk out of me with um, having good communication with people. I, I uh, started to isolate, so now my communication is like a bit lower, but uh, technology has really helped me stay in contact with my friends even if I do isolate, which is really nice. Oh, gosh. Um, wow. I mean, most of my life, I feel like everyone's been able to reach me in a second, or at least since high school. Um, so I, I don't know, because I, I don't remember much of my life before then. It doesn't feel like it's changed very much. Um, but I know as a kid, that wasn't the case. If I needed to reach a friend, you know, it was even just calling a landline, like there was a chance you couldn't even reach them at home. Um, so yeah, I just feel like the accessibility of communicating with people is so great today that we've also raised our expectation of being able to reach people. Yeah, that's and true. And I actually find, I can't stand it. Uh, just the other day I had to turn my phone on like, do not disturb, which I've never actually done for a whole day and been like, I'm not gonna think about what anyone needs of me. Um, and it felt really good. Yeah, I've actually been turning my phone on airplane mode at nighttime from like about 10 p.m. until like about an hour after I wake up just to give myself decompression time and to not overwhelm myself and to really think about like my own self before anything else because I have a habit of putting all these other people who want to talk to me before myself. So I just take that time to like not be on tech. I think going from just a, like a regular flip phone to a smartphone was a big jump. So that was that was pretty cool to experience. So remember playing like Fruit Ninja on the, the smartphone when it first came out, so, but <laughs> now no one plays that anymore. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I think it's a lot of power and information technology in, in a handheld device, which has really expanded what we can do. So, yeah. Faster and faster, it seems like. I mean, my roommate and I were about the same age and we were talking about it the other day and it was like, you know, we went from landlines to smartphones and you know, your smartphone now has more computing technology in it than the Apollo missions when they went to the moon in the 60s. So it's come quite a long ways. Pretty much everything I had in my bedroom in the 80s is now part of this phone. Stereo, had all that stuff. Well, I seem to no longer make phone calls. <laughs> I, everything is text or, or um, IMs or something like that. I very seldom, it's kind of ironic to have a phone and not use it as a phone. Mm -hmm. But that's really the big thing, yeah, it's just everything goes by text. Yeah. I think that it's exponential, right? I mean, it used to be that you wouldn't be able to reach anybody unless you called them on their landline. Can you imagine? You probably can't even imagine that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been exponential. I mean, it's been crazy. It's changed everything from how you parent to how you communicate to everything. You know, it's changed immensely. Yes, I mean, it's, yeah. it's continuous and it's hard to keep up with and it's hard for older people, I think, to, to, be, in the, to be in the game. Dramatically. I mean, it used to be, especially when you were in business, people before cell phones, people actually had to figure things out on their own. Now they can use their phone as a device or they can call someone that would know the answer instead of figuring it out themselves. So, yeah. Oh gosh, a cell phone is your computer now. You can do anything. You can GPS, you can Google, you can call, you can text, you can send pictures. Definitely big change. And what are some ways that technology has impacted society positively? Uh, communication, like lots of times I'll say to myself, how did we ever exist without cell phones? Where are you? Where are you going? Um, I'm supposed to meet you. Um, so communication is a whole lot easier between human beings now. I can't think of any positive things. I, I'm, I'm not a huge, I don't, I have a cell phone right in my pocket and it's great for, I think it's great for, you know, like finding our, our way to down here yeah. where before you had to use maps and things like that to figure it out or ask, stop at a gas station and ask directions. Now you don't have to do that, but you don't have to, 
communicate with people either because you can either use your phone or or call someone on the phone so I think there's faster communication and in some ways that could be good if there's emergency situations that's true that's a good one Um, yeah well it can also in some ways it helps loneliness in some ways it creates loneliness so it's kind of a double-edged sword with that where people feel like they're connected but they're not truly connected. So it's kind of positive where people feel like they're connected with each other through you know, the social media and everything else that they can do every day on their phone. But at the same time, it kind of hinders them from actually having full on contact. Well, it does give people access to more information. Um, so I think that's a good thing. Um, that's probably, unfortunately, the only positive I can think of. Uh, the ability to have information almost instantaneously is very powerful, but then, um, you know, just all the confusion in social media can just be kind of a side effect, side effect of that. So it's brought people together um, for really good reasons. It's brought like, um, say, online with uh, the fail cat community. Um, it's helped people trap new to release cats like all over the U.S. There's huge groups now um, because of just small creators showing awareness to things. And um, I just really think uh, communities can be built like in the snap of uh, just some fingers overnight um, if they really want to. So I think it's, it's good. Yeah, wow. Um, technology changes. <laughs> it's been wild. I mean, the economic impact is like massive. The ability to, and I mean telecoms, like everything from Burlington's, um, Burlington Telecom's fiber optic network is incredible. I feel like a lot of people don't realize we have some of the best internet in the world here. So that affects not just like streaming, um, watching movies, but like competitive online gaming requires a really short latency and that's achievable in a fiber optic network. So we have, um, yeah, the, the like, there's so much going on there. And then you've got the satellite networks, Starlink, which not only, um, you know, provides consumer level internet, but it's actually changed the game for international trading of securities, like, you know, big trading, stocks, options, whatever, Um, because the ability to transmit their order to to a market or across the globe to the other side of the world is a lot faster now. So it gives traders this edge. Um, So I'm just mentioning these things because these technological advancements don't just affect our lives on the consumer end, they affect such a massive aspect of the economy that then trickles down into how we live our lives. I think innovation is is almost always a plus for for society and I think keeping in touch with with people I think like workers and and young people and everyone has you know like more leverage against like institutions and and powerful people because they can communicate that way so I think that's a, a good I think that's a benefit. I'd say like from the creative standpoint because I'm an artist um, social media and like digital publishing allows artists to get their art out if it's like not drowned out by what's trending or whatever. What do you guys think are some negatives of technology? Oh, I mean, like having the instant gratification of having like information at your fingertips, there's obviously like a lot of benefits to it, but I think that it also. Um, puts a lot of pressure on having to know everything all the time and like they're like (laughs) the influx of information that we're like exposed to just by like having smartphones is really a lot and like I don't think I was meant to know everything that I know I don't need to know all of it and it's like I think causes a lot of like stress on to like feel like you have to know everything and like feel like you have this responsibility to keep up on everything that's going on in the world and like be the most morally superior because you have all of the resources in the world to know. I think it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe more on a minor level, but like kind of feel less in touch with reality, like not as grounded. Like I feel like at least me recently, I just, it's too easy to kind of go down a rabbit hole on my phone and the next thing I know it's like 
two in the morning i'm like i could have you know been out having fun with friends but rather i'm just <laughs> scrolling through tiktok or instagram and it makes it too easy to to become complacent in life and rather than exploring cool different hobbies or things i might want to do i just get stuck on my phone watching people doing their hobbies <laughs> so <laughs> yeah i think it's had a, a large impact especially in the last like couple years yeah i totally agree um, um i think social media is a main reason why our generation is so separated from yeah. each other and so anxious to communicate with each other yeah i think it makes for like a lot of um like it's it's almost like a drug like you kind of get like a really docile group of people that are kind of tuned out to a lot of like real world issues and just like life in front of them so that's obviously a bad thing but yeah I don't know I and and then I guess like hacking you there's like a lot you're you're much more vulnerable to being um taken advantage of that way which and like too much access to each other kind of has made us like not really con like communicate yeah, that's true. well I think. Yeah, that's definitely like coincide with the mental health crisis too, is just like this access to social media and technology. Uh, like before, it's brought bad people together. Um, there's a lot of stuff online that really shouldn't be online, shouldn't be shared. There's like, people can uh, be hateful and stuff behind screens um, and not really have uh, kind of like the repercussions of it. Um, unless you're doing like really, really bad stuff, but even then, like there's still like almost zero repercussions. Um, and lots of nasty stuff can happen on the internet. It's, the internet's really big. Anything can happen on it, I'm pretty sure, so. Oh uh, yeah, bullying is through the roof, like oh she my said. God, yeah. um, and on top of that, just like the social media aspect in general. Cancel um, culture? Cancel culture is a thing, yeah, but I'm just thinking more, our competitive nature as a capitalist society, mm -hmm. social media just seems to be accelerating mental illnesses or um, accelerating a sense of worthlessness within our population. Uh, everyone not feeling like they're valuable to society or to the people around them. And a lot of that comes through this ability to, to communicate constantly, to look at into other people's lives and see how they're living. And we just keep comparing ourselves to everyone um and like literally constantly like it's like no one can escape it even when i acknowledge this and say it like i'm gonna go home later and go on instagram and i'm gonna see people doing things and i'm going to think like maybe i should be doing those things too everyone looks at that that's cool like we define what success is and happiness and suffering and our worth based on the collective concept our collective ideologies um and that's just getting so crazy with the way telecoms are working now. Um, and then we've got like social media alg algorithms, right? Oh, that are pushing, that, that want us to stay more engaged. So they're keeping us engaged. They're um, moving information. They're, they're distributing media based on what they think will keep you engaged. But there's an inverse relationship there, or not an inverse, but yeah, I guess maybe it's inverse, that we're not really considering where the consumer is also influencing the algorithms. And the algorithms are influencing the consumer. And it just feels like nobody's really in control, nobody knows where this is going. Because it's not just the algorithm and it's not just people making bad decisions. It's like we're just spiraling into delusions. Um, new and, and it's cool because you get new fashion statements and all these different branches of culture but they all seem to be emerging always not just from a point of view of let's um explore life and just create for the sake of creation it's like always in the point of view of like i should be this because it's better than that it's there's always this competitive nature in culture and i feel like our telecoms and social media are just it's just accelerating so quickly um, and these conversations aren't happening enough. Well, it lets people feel brave and be, as they say, keyboard warriors, you know, just troll people and not have to show their face and have any repercussions to what they're saying to people. So that's, I think, the biggest negative. It's kind of Pandora's box. Pretty much everybody has their phone and they're looking at it while they're walking and not really engaged. And also going to a restaurant and seeing families where they just entertain their child with a cell phone instead of having a conversation or 
using crayons on a you know placemat. I think just not figuring things out for yourself and uh, I think is a definite negative to it and uh, the personal um, uh, discussions back and forth with with other people everyone's on their cell phone instead of instead of uh, communicating verbally well I guess you're still communicating verbally but not in a I don't think it's in a positive so people spend way too much time even me at my age I you know we sit down in a restaurant my cell phone is out I'm checking emails I'm checking text messages so so much reliance on cell phones where people don't call each other people don't write each other the way that we used to how do you think that uh, technology is going to impact future generations you know I think it's it's changed so much you know in in my lifetime over the last 40 or 50 years it's going to be amazing what happens you know, I can see them putting a chip or something in, in your ear or, or something so that you don't even have to use a phone. You just so I mean, I, I'm sure it's going to develop uh, further and will become a society that doesn't communicate with each other except for through those technology devices, you know landlines <laughs> pay phones there are things that people don't even know used to exist a rotary phone gosh you know you probably don't even know what a rotary phone looks like um so i i think you know information instantaneously is going to be something that future generations are just going to be used to yep i think it's just going to continue to change and it'll i can't even imagine what they'll come up with I think that what's going to happen is they're probably at some point going to have to get a grip on what, how it's used and who's using it and what they're using. Because I mean, if, the, if, we, if we're talking about artificial intelligence or anything else that's coming down the line, there's going to have to be some sort of regulation to protect a lot of the young folks that get very negatively impacted by some of the things that go on. So that'll be important to sort of, that we get that in some sort of, some sort of lane to make it so that it's going to be okay. You know, useful but okay for everybody. More and more, I've been watching a lot of articles or reading a lot of articles and watching things about AI. So I just think with everything heading that way, that's going to be the next big impact on people is using either AI to tell stories, make videos, whatever. But I think that's going to be the next big leap. Yeah. And how do you see um, technology impacting future generations? Um, we're going to get more and more involved with our phones, I think, um, for better or worse. And, yeah, hopefully we could just have ways to kind of educate ourselves on the best way to use that technology without getting too wrapped into it. I know I could be better, so we'll see. Thank you. Yep. That's it. Cool. Thanks. All right. Oh, a lot. I think that, I mean, I think that, like, yeah. the both sides of, like, the goods and the bads are just continued, are going to continue to be, like, exacerbated. And, like, what a beautiful thing that, like, kids now have, like, consistent access to internet like at school and they have access to a Chromebook and like lots of like great opportunities for like especially learning in turn or like so I used to work in schools but like kids that usually wouldn't have access to a lot of like uh like adaptations to learning that like now that it works better for them because they can stay home and learn or they can like be in a separate room if a classroom doesn't work for them and there's all these like great um accommodations for like learning but also, you know, there's like, you know, when you're a nine-year-old on like kick and not that that's a thing anymore, <laughs> but like in a, like there's all of this exposure to like the connection between like kids and the rest of the world that is not necessarily looking out for their best interest. And I think that is like only going to continue to be exacerbated as like information continues the, inform the the world of information continues to like grow and like kids younger and younger and younger have access to the internet and like access to like media literacy which is like kind of scary but also a lot of benefits it's very it's very hard huh? yeah i mean i think even now it's just getting exponentially more prominent in kids lives like i was in high school back in 20 14 and I had gotten an iPad in my class which was like 
huge and now it's just like kind of the standard to see that like it would be kind of weird to not have like a Chromebook or an iPad in any given class um, and I think there is obviously a lot of pros and cons that comes with it like having all these pretty much unlimited resources at your fingertips is awesome for kids this these generations but also can be blown out of proportion you could be accessing things that maybe you don't need to <laughs> at that age or just yes yeah, things that you shouldn't really be exposed to yet um, so I think it's only going to be exacerbated as the years go on but it's kind of hard to tell exactly where it will go so. thank you guys so much yeah, of course. Um, first I'm going to mention iPad babies um, the whole cocomelon thing I'm not sure if you saw that whole thing where uh, it's terrifying where like the song plays and the kid just runs to the TV like these kids have iPads like babies have iPads and they can work them and everything um, and it's insane because kids should be interacting with nature and learning from that instead of like actual internet stuff um, parenting I feel they've kind of slacked off a little bit by just giving their kids technology when really it shouldn't be that it should be you and your child um, I think this is like uh, just like a random thing. I think um, VR can positively affect people with disabilities. Say people who can't walk, they can walk in game and like VR chat and they can make friends and stuff. Um, I think that's nice, but I also think uh, the internet needs more security and stuff because it's getting bigger and it's, it's not good. I don't well, like the whole thing is going to come to an end when encryption goes out the window. Oh God. When artificial, well not artificial intelligence, but quantum computing could basically ruin every security feature that's out there. So like banking systems, like everything could come to an end, yeah. But um, back to the question, which was about... How can, how can future generations be impacted by technology? Right, future yeah. generations, yeah. Yeah, so just thinking about like we were, I don't know, kind of on the edge of this, of screens always being in front of us. I keep calling everyone, we're, ch we're children of the screen. And I think, um, at least for myself and probably you too, we're video gamers. So growing up with those technologies have benefited me in the sense that when I um, run into a new user interface or a new software, because of that previous experience, I'm able to understand it really quickly and like navigate, know, know how the software works. Mm -hmm. Whereas like if I put my parents in front of the computer and said, hey, can you do this? Even though they did grow up with computers, they didn't grow up with like, all these user interfaces um, so they don't learn as quick um, but then yeah the downside is the children of the screen our like attention spans are so shortened our desire to avoid boredom like boredom has a valuable benefit in our lives and our mental health and we're not getting that anymore the younger kids aren't getting it at all I mean it's it's weird to see Kids are getting like overstimulated like, like down. as babies because of the screens. Like it's way too much stimulation. Yeah. They are they're not supposed to have that much when they're like just born and stuff. It's not yeah, good for their see, brains. Like, toddlers with iPads like it's, walking. It's so down, bad for them. Like fully like I don't know if they got anything of their surroundings while they were here. Um, video games for me as a kid, I think it uh, like the gaming community affects everybody differently depending on how you're raised and like the environment that you're in. Um, the internet and video games can be used um, as a tool of escapism, like for coping and stuff, or it can be used uh, to learn or to do bad things. There's a little bee flying around your head, just letting you know. Hello, sir. Um, and for me, uh, say with like uh, Animal Crossing and stuff, I grew up in the middle of nowhere, Vermont. Those were my friends when I had nobody to talk to when I was tiny. Um, I would go on, have like my little NPC friends. Um, but now these days I'll go, um, I'll go like onto like my rhythm games or like anything, and I've got actual friends who I can communicate with. But um, people who I'm meeting are like from Singapore and everywhere else. So I'm meeting people from like all across the world, and it's, it's the best thing. So I think technology has positively impacted me in a way, but also very negatively because I wasn't taught about the dangers as a child. And I really hope with the future generations. Um, they will be taught about the dangers of the internet and they won't have to go what I went through learning it the hard way. Um, I think that it could get better or worse. Like I think about like, like what is it? Like the metaverse and stuff. I feel like mm -hmm. more stuff could become online in a con at a concerning level. Um, yeah, I was gonna say that too. I feel like education might become like a little bit um, 
not obsolete, but I just think like there's not going to be as much of a need for people to do this like very traditional form of, of learning because you just have so much information. Yeah. Um, especially with AI and stuff like but that. But maybe with more awareness to how it's negatively impacted, maybe people will learn how to work around that. I think so too. I feel like like this, um, like the the social, what do they call it? Like just like the mental health crisis that's come uh, with Instagram and stuff like that. I feel like that might yeah. phase out and people are going to get over just, that. 